In this example, we're looking at saving for college using a 529 plan. Um, Lily wants to set up a 529 account for our new granddaughter and wants the account to grow to $40,000 over 18 years. Okay, she believes that this account is going to be earning 6% interest compounded semi-annually, so that means twice a year. And we want to figure out today what does she need to invest in order for it to grow to this $40,000 18 years from now under these conditions. So this is a compound interest formula uh, problem where we have A of T equals P times the quantity 1 plus R over N raised to the N times T. So A of T, that's what it's worth in the future or the accumulated amount. So in our case, that's going to be that $40,000. Kind of listing these values off to the side for each variable. Then we're going to go ahead and plug them into the formula and then solve down for the missing variable. 18 years is the value for our time. So that's going to be T. 18 years goes down there. Um, P is what the account's worth right now. So we don't know what the account's worth right now. That's going to be however much she invests. So we don't know what P is. R is the rate usually given as a percentage initially. So in ours, it's 6% initially. We need to switch that over to a decimal. So instead of 6%, we're gonna go ahead and move that decimal place two places to the left. So that's gonna be 0 0.06 as a decimal for our formula. Finally, N is the number of compoundings in a single year. So not the total number of compoundings in 18 years, but in a single year, this is compounded semi-annually. So that's twice a year. So our N value is going to be 2. All right, filling everything in, let's take a look at what this looks like. It's going to be 40,000 on the left-hand side equals P times the quantity 1 plus R 0 0.06 over N raised to the N, 2 again, times 18. Okay, we can do a little bit of simplifying down here if we want before we solve for P, but we get 40,000 equals P multiplied by, I guess this will reduce down to 1.03. And then two times 18 will give us 36 as our exponent here if we'd like. Um, but notice really what we wanna do is we wanna get P on one side all by itself. Well, P is connected to the set of parentheses and the exponent with a multiplication. So really all that we need to do to get P on one side by itself is counteract that multiplication by using division on both sides. And hopefully at this point, we're pretty comfortable with our calculators that we should be able to get this all in our calculator at once without doing decimal approximations along the way. Okay, because that'll give us the most accurate answer possible. So in this case, on the right-hand side, we're gonna notice that we were multiplying and dividing by the same value. So we're gonna get P on the right-hand side all by itself, the left-hand side, hopefully we can get this in our calculator, 13,801.30 dollars. In this case, it does ask us to, to the nearest dollar, how much we're, will she need to save? So we're gonna get rid of that 0.3 as it was below 0.5. All right, so I hope this helps out as you're working on setting these up and solving down. Um, compound interest problems. Notice we didn't see continuously that big keyword that would say we would use that formula that has E raised to the power. All right, good luck.